and Matthew 24, 9 reads, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. That prophecy was beginning to be fulfilled by Paul. In the ninth chapter of Acts, we read, And Saul, yet bearing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of Yahushua, went into the high priest and desired to him letters to the masters, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. In Acts 9, 17, it reads, And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on your name. Adventists, this is also our work. We have been hearing the voice more distinctly in the messages that has been going forth for the last two years, declaring unto us the Father's name. Review and Herald, March 11, 1890, paragraph 6. To reveal the Father, to declare his name, hearing his voice saying, declare his name, this is a commandment from the Almighty Creator. Are we not commandment keepers? For two years, they were hearing this message and never obeyed it. Why? Do you believe they studied the book of Exodus? I do. And if they did, they knew these verses, Exodus 3.15. And God said more over unto Moses, Thus shall you say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, have sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. In Exodus 9.16 it says this, And in very deed, for this cause have I raised thee up, for to show in thee my power, and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. So they knew the name was a memorial, and they knew the will of the Almighty, that he wanted his name declared throughout the whole earth. They knew the Sabbath was a memorial. They knew what a memorial was. It was to be remembered. Therefore, they knew his name was to be remembered, Exodus 3.15. This movement is about keeping the memorial of Exodus 3.15. It is also our work. In his name, I quote, in his name, the warfare of truth against error was to be carried forward, subverting the strongholds of idolatry and sin. People were to be stirred to carry the truth to all tongues and nations, giving the trumpet a certain sound, and arousing the slumbering nations from spiritual apathy and death. The disciples was to be his witnesses. Their every action was to be fastened attention on his name as possessing that vital power by which men were to be brought into oneness with him who is the source of all power and efficiency. They were to center their faith in him who is the fountain of mercy, blessings, and power. They were to present their petition to the Father in his name, and then their prayers would be answered. They were to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Christ's name was to be their watchword their badge of distinction, 
their bond of union, the authority for their course of action, and their source of their success. Nothing was to be recognized in his kingdom that did not bear his name and superscription. Review and Herald, March 15, 1898, paragraph 6. If the Almighty wanted Mrs. White to declare the Father's name, to make us one, she knew there was only one name that made us one, the Father's name, John 17, 11. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those whom thou have given me, that they may be one as we are. Who do you think the someone was that did not want her to declare the name? Why have we succumbed to the teaching of the name is too holy to say? What chapter and what verse does it say that in the word of the Almighty Scripture? Too holy to say is one of the reasons Jews give for their custom of removing the name. And I read from the back of some Bible dictionaries up under the alphabet Y, you find this. Yahweh, the covenant God of Israel, YHWH, in the original Hebrew, according to the Jewish customs, because of reverence, the divine name was not to be spoken. So the Hebrew word for Lord and God was substituted. Whenever the word Lord and God appear in large and small capital letters, the original Hebrew reads YHWH. Who would dare deceive man into believing that he has the authority to remove the name of the Almighty and then command the Almighty's people not to say his name? Talking about it's, they reverend his name. If they reverend his name, they would not have removed his name. Do you think Miss White knew that wherever she was reading L-O-R-D in all capital letters, that the Father's name, her Creator, her Creator's name had been removed from there? Do you think, you would think that she would write something about it somewhere in all of her writings if she knew that they had removed the sacred name? But the word gives us the real reason for the name being removed and changed. Jeremiah 23, 25, the Almighty speaking. I have heard what the prophet said that prophesied lies in my name, saying I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophet that prophesied lies? Yea, they are the prophet of the deceit of their own heart. They had a demon of deceit in their hearts. Jeremiah 23, 27 says, Which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams which they tell every man and his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. His people in these last days will call on his name. Ezekiel 39, 7. So will I make my holy name known in the midst of Israel, and I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore. And the heathen shall know I am YHWH, pronounced Yahoo, the Holy One of Israel. The name is Yahoo. That name belongs to the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit. That is why he commanded his disciples to baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit 
the name is Yahoo, but they have different titles. There's Yahoo, the Father, Yahoo, Shua, the Son, and the Ruka Yahoo, the Holy Spirit. Zechariah 13 8 reads, And it shall come to pass that in all the land, says Yahoo, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third part shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined, and I will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, Yahoo is my almighty one. He has made his name known. Yahoo is his name, and it is the only name in the sanctuary my way is in the sanctuary there is no other name given acts 4 12. we find the name yahoo in the sanctuary on the head of the high priest declaring him holy to yahoo exodus 28 and 36 read and thou shalt make a plate of pure gold and engrave upon it like the engraving of a sonnet, holiness to Yahoo. We find the name in the ark in the Decalogues seven times. Exodus 25, 16. And thou shalt put into the ark the testimonies which I have given thee. And then between the cherubims, the name. Second Samuel 6 and 2. And David arose and went with all the people that were with him from Baal of Judah to bring up from thence the ark of the Almighty whose name is called by the name Yahoo of hosts that dwells between the cherubims. We read in 1 Kings 8.29 that thine eyes May be open toward this house night and day even toward the place of which thou hast said my name shall be there that thou mayest hearken unto the prayers which thy servant shall make toward this place no other name is said in the sanctuary some forces was against declaring the name we read in early writings, page 220, and I quote, I saw that God had especially guarded the Bible, yet when copies of it were few, learned men had in some instances changed the words, thinking that they were making it more plain, deceived by Satan, when in reality they were mystifying that which was plain by causing it to lean to their own established views which were governed by tradition. We read in Jeremiah 8 and 8 through 9 these scribes when Bibles were few rejected the words and added to it and we read how do you say we are wise and the law of Yahoo is with us? Lo, certainly in vain made he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. Verse 9. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of Yahoo and what wisdom is in them. And we read from Early Writings, page 226, paragraph 2. Satan therefore decided that he must come in a mild form. He has already corrupted the doctrines of the Bible and traditions, which were to ruin millions were taking deep root. 
just as it is now. Satan gave the prophets a demon of deceit, Jeremiah 23, 26, to forget the name. It is a memorial. Satan gave others demons to change the Sabbath. It is a memorial, but the name of the Almighty Creator is the only memorial that the Almighty say is my memorial, Exodus 3.15. Satan hates all of the Almighty's memorials. If you understand what our Almighty means by His memorial, then you as commandment keepers will join this movement. In the book of Mark, it says, chapter 7, verse 6, He answered and said unto them, well have Elijah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written. This people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandment of men. In our seminaries, we are taught, the pastors are taught, that the name is too sacred to utter by Jewish rabbis that don't even believe that the Messiah has came. For laying aside the commandment of the Almighty, ye hold to the traditions of men, as the washing of pots and cups and many other such things you do. These traditions that we hold to, they are the tradition of calling the Almighty Creator Lord and God titles that does not belong to him, titles that were inspired by Satan's own children, the murderers of the Almighty Son. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abhorred not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. John 8, 44. To have us to call the Almighty Lord and God is a tradition from the Jews who the Almighty called the children of the devil. They was possessed how else would they ever come to the conclusion to deny the name, to change the name, and to deny us the use of the name? In Luke 11.52, we find the Messiah confronting the same type of scribes that had went into the scriptures, Jeremiah 8 and 8. He know what they did. Woe unto you, scribes, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering in, you hindered. In Acts 4.16, we find this, saying, What shall we do with these men? For they indeed, a noble miracle has been done by them. It's manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem and we cannot deny it, but that it spread no further among the people. Let us strictly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name to teach the world that the name is Lord and God and character. According to Luke 10, 19, we have been given power and authority over serpents and scorpions and over all the power that Satan possess and nothing by any means can harm us. But we do not rejoice because his spirits are subject unto us. We rejoice because our names are written in heaven. Little flock, hear ye the word of the Most High. The salve the ointment that we must have is the name. Hear what the Spirit says.
to the Leo this evening, and I quote from Review and Herald, March 11, 1890, paragraph 13. Our eyes must be anointed with eyesight. We must draw nigh to Ulhim, and he will draw nigh to us. If we come in his own appointed way, oh, that you may go forth as the disciples did after the day of Pentecost, and then your testimony will have a living ring, and souls will be converted to Ulhim. Laodiceans, the I says, is found in the Songs of Solomon. Chapter 1, verse 2. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is better than wine, because of the savor of thy good ointment, thy name is as ointment poured forth Therefore, do the virgins love thee?